Let's create an assault rifle. For this video, I'm going to assume that you've already watched the first or the third person item creation videos. Those videos do a great job at showing the details on how to create a new item. And in this video, we are going to create and configure an assault rifle. So let's get started by going to the item manager. I'm not gonna to spend too, too much time on this window because we've already been over it in those other videos. So I'm just gonna drag the model in. I'm going to name it. We want a prefab item and not assigned to a specific character. So I'm gonna leave that empty. The slot ID should be zero, which corresponds to the right hand. We want to use the My Assault Rifle item definition. We want to add the prefab to the item definition. It has an animator ID of one. We want to add the first person item. We do not need a base object. We do need a visible item, which is the assault rifle model. The animator controller should be the animator controller for the assault rifle. And we want a similar setup with the third person perspective. We are gonna leave the action template empty because we do not want to copy an existing item settings, but we are going to add the shootable action. I will hit build and then I will just save it in that default path and then I can just get rid of the item manager for now. When we hit play, we will notice that the character does not pick up the assault rifle and the reason for that is because the character doesn't know about that new assault rifle yet. So we want to go to the inventory component and let's go ahead and add the assault rifle. We will add the item definition, just we'll add the two item definitions, the assault rifle and the assault rifle bullet. And we will add one assault rifle and 100 bullets. Now when we hit play, we should see that the assault rifle does get added. And let me look at it in the scene view. And I was using the scroll, the mouse scroll, so that's why the character was equipping and unequipping. Um, but so we have the assault rifle now in both a first and a third person view. The assault rifle is not positioned correctly. And if you remember, we can position it by taking the model and then just adjusting the transform so that it, it's positioned correctly in the character's hands. And this is a very rough, rough, rough positioning, but um, we will be able to uh, just use the demo value. So I'm, I'm gonna basically take these values, if they were good values, then I will take those and I will place them in the local spawn position and the local spawn rotation for this first person component. Um, I already have good values for that. So I am going to uh, just take those values from the demo scene and just transfer them over here. And that's for the first person. I need to do something similar for third person. Get those values and then transfer them over. Now that the values are transferred over, when I hit play, we should see that the assault rifles are positioned correctly in both the third and the first person hands. So that looks good. You'll notice that the Assault rifle is positioned correctly, but the hands are not positioned correctly in the view. So we want to adjust that and we can adjust that by going to the first person perspective item and just adjusting this value to something that looks a bit better. Um, I'm, I'm gonna take these values from the demo scene as well, but to get the demo scene values, we literally just did this exact same thing where we we got some good looking values and then copied it over uh, in edit mode. And I'm going to take those values that are from the demo scene. So now that I have those values, let's hit play and we should see that the assault rifle is positioned correctly in a first person view. So yeah, that, that looks a whole lot better. When I try firing the assault rifle, you'll notice that the character's finger plays the animation, but the assault rifle doesn't actually fire or do anything. The reason for that is because 
uh, it's actually trying to dry fire because it doesn't think it has any ammo. So let's give it, let's let it know that it does have some ammo and we can do this using the modular item system. This modular item system is really cool in that it allows you to customize exactly what you want the action to do and it allows you to add and remove very specific modules so that only the code that you're interested in running is run. So now if I go to the, um, the ammo module group, you'll notice that this ammo item definition, it has a null value when we want to tell it that it has some bullets. So now I have assigned the item definition. If I go to the simple clip module, you'll notice that it has a clip size of 50. So it will know when it's reloading to use 50 bullets at a time. So now when I hit play, we should see that the assault rifle does a little bit more than just sit there. So good, so we're, so we're getting some recoil. We really don't have any other feedback besides that recoil. So let's go ahead and add some. If I go back to the assault rifle, the first thing that we want to add is the muzzle effect. You'll notice the muzzle effect module automatically got added, but there is no prefab specified. So let's specify the prefab. And we can we'll just use the muzzle effect, muzzle effect from the demo scene. And if we look at that game object, uh, it's just a basic component that has a light and a, or it's a basic game object that just has a muzzle flash and a light. Um, this particular one uses a mesh to render the muzzle effect, but you can also uh, use a uh, particle system. So this. Prefab was created from the object manager and that you can get to under the tools ops of ultimate character controller object manager and under the object builder you'll notice there's a lot of different options and I just selected muzzle flash for that. So we have selected that muzzle flash. Let me now select the shell that we want to eject. So let's, there's this shell effect. Uh, actually, I'm looking at the demo scene. So here's, here's our assault rifle, my assault rifle. Let's look at shell effect, and then we will select the correct shell prefab. So assault rifle shell, and this shell was also created uh, using the object builder, so just selected shell. Now when we hit play, we should see that there's a little bit more response. And, and cool, so, so we have a muzzle flash, and we have some shells ejecting. So that's progress. Muzzle flash is in the wrong position as is the shells. So let's adjust that now. We can do that within the prefab. And let's go to the module and let's go back to the muzzle effect. And we'll notice that there's this muzzle flash location and it's just set to all zeros. So let's, let's put it at the, uh, the tip of the weapon. So, so that looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to copy those values and I will paste it for the third person perspective as well. The first and the third person perspective uses the same model. So that makes this part easy. I want to change the fire point location as well to be the same location as the muzzle flash. This is the location where either the hit scan or the projectile gets fired from. So it should be at the end. Then the shell location, it's not terrible, but let's let's change it to be kind of in that area. And I will copy those values and change it for the first person perspective as well. Now when we hit play, we should see that the muzzle flash and the shells are spawned in the correct area. So yeah, that that looks good. Um now let's actually let, let me reload and you'll notice that as I'm reloading the clip does not move at all. The reason for that is because we need to adjust a module. Let's go to the generic reloader module and you'll notice that we have a lot of different options and one of the options is to reload, detach, attach clip. Let's enable that so that the clip can be detached and then attached again. And then the next thing that we need to set is which clip we actually want to do the detachment. And we can do that by opening up the prefab and then we'll select the clip. 
Um, the thing with this clip is that notice that you're, it's using a skinned mesh renderer. Well, the skin mesh renderer won't allow you to detach and attach because it's expecting an animation to move that renderer. So we instead need to select just mesh filter and mesh renderer, which is the, the standard renderer in Unity. And let's assign assigned the element for the material. And then we will also assign the, the mesh for that it should render. So let's go ahead and select that. I'm just gonna copy that to make it a little bit easier for on me when I want to now paste that value. So we'll paste that and then we'll paste the mesh renderer and we will assign, assign the material. You'll notice now it looks kind of strange that we just have a clip that has the material but nothing else. So I will just assign the assault rifle as well and that that will give it a lot more color there are some other random elements that we could assign as well but um but we'll just leave that as it is for right now um, let's go back actually let's go back to the prefab and let's go back to that module and when we open up the prefab and we'll go back to the generic reloader and let's assign the clip for both the first person and third person perspective. And this is the clip that we had just changed that mesh renderer for. The attachment specifies the location that the clip should attach to when it is detached. And we want to attach it to the character's left hand. The problem with that is that this is a prefab so you can't reference the character's left hand. We can use the object identifier component for that and this ask for the object identifier ID. We're just going to use the same ID that the demo scene uses. So it's this random ID right here. Um, and then let's go ahead and assign the object identifier to the character's left hand so that it knows what object it should attach to. And we are just going to assign that same ID. So that's for the first person. And let's go to the third person perspective. So now after I do all that and I hit play, we should see that the clip is reloaded. So, so that's, let's fire a little bit and now do the reload. And so, yeah, that, that worked really well. Um, it would do the same thing in third person view. So that, that, Good. Um, actually, as you, you'll notice, as I'm moving around, you'll see that the character's right hand, and I saw for a moment the character's left hand had completely disappeared. The reason for that is because Unity doesn't think it needs to render it because the render bounds are not set correctly. So I just clicked on the character's right arm, and you'll see that here are the render bounds, and the arm is not in view. So we can adjust this by extending the render bounds so that it is within view. You can also sort of cheat and hit update when off screen, and this will just always render that. Uh, but for performance reasons, we want to specify the render bounds. So I just specified this larger value. So I'm gonna copy that larger value over to Unity or in edit mode as well. And then that will just make sure we are always going to render the arm. So I'll do that for both the right and the left arm. Now I'm going to hit play and I'm going to move around a little bit just to make sure that that change looked good. So yeah, that, that's a lot better. All right. Um, the next thing that we want to set up is let, let's set up the scope on the, on the assault rifle. You'll notice that the scope right here is just completely white. Um, we can use a module, we can use a scope module to assign the scope and have it render correctly. So under this extra modules group, there's a scope option and it asks for the camera for the first and the third person perspective. We don't have that camera yet, but let's create a new camera that will sit underneath the scope. And we will do that right here. Um, there's two settings we need to adjust is the target texture because we want to render to a texture. We are going to render to a first person scope texture. And then we also want to remove the audio listener because we only want one audio listener in the scene. I'm gonna do this for third person as well. And so let me create a camera, remove the audio listener, 
and then also assign the texture. We're going to assign it a different texture. So the camera is going to render to this texture and then the scope is going to use the material that gets assigned or use the material that has that render texture assigned. So if I select third person scope, um, we can, we'll take a look at it real quickly, but we can see that the first person scope in this case, this first and third person are similar. It just, it has the, the render texture assigned. So, so this will draw the, the results of the camera on, on that texture. I want to position the camera to be in the correct location. And in order to do that, I'm gonna look at what values I used in the demo scene. And this will just allow me to make sure the camera is facing the correct direction. And these are rough values, but they, they work. So, so yeah, that camera preview look, already looks a lot better. I'll just copy those values. And now that those have been copied, let's go ahead and assign the scope to this scope module. And the scope, you really wouldn't even need the scope module, but the scope module will, for example, allow you to disable the camera if you're not aiming the scope, just for a little bit increased performance. So let's go ahead and just drag that in. Now when I hit play, we should see that the scope camera is, is working in both a first and a third person view. So it's not as easy to see in a third person view, but we can see that there is a scope on the, the assault rifle and that does look like it's working and you can definitely see it in first person view. Um, as I'm zooming in first person view, I would want the assault rifle to be positioned in the center of the screen instead of just the camera zooming in and it, it not moving at all. And in order to do that, we can use the state system so let me go back to my prefab and we want to adjust the position offset of the camera when the character is aiming and we can do that using the state system. So let me add an existing preset and we have this preset already created called aim assault rifle first person perspective item preset. So I will add that and I am going to rename the state to just be called aim because aim, this gets set by the ability system. So let me actually show you that. So if I go to the ability system and I click on aim, the aim ability, you can see right here, it has this state it's called aim that gets selected when, uh, when the state is active or when the ability is active. So that's, that's how that value gets set. And then when, when aim is active, let's click on the preset and you'll see that it, it actually sets a, a decent number of properties but the one that we care about is this position offset. So now when I hit play and I go to the assault rifle, or if I start zooming with the assault rifle in first person mode, we can see that the assault rifle, it, it gets positioned correctly. And if we go to the items, we can see that this position offset value gets changed. And the reason for that is because of the, the state, the aim state gets activated. So all that looks good. When I, when I actually fire the assault rifle, we'll, we notice that there's no really fire effects for the bullet hitting the object. And the reason for that is because we haven't set up the state system or the surface system to work with that. So we're going to go to um, and go to a different module called the, let's see which module is it, the, the spawn surface effect module. And under here, there's this surface impact. The surface impact specifies the type of impact that should be generated when the assault rifle bullet hits a surface. So this bullet will now, or now the surface system knows that a bullet is being spawned or is being impacted. And from there, it should know, for example, what sound effect to play or what decal to show. So now, now we have some bullet decals. So that looks good. The, the last thing that we want to do is just assign some audio. We haven't done anything with audio yet, and that's a problem. The audio that we want to play, we'll, we'll, we'll assign some uh, different type of audio effects. So the first one that we will assign is when the, uh, the assault rifle is fired, and we can do that using this generic item effects and then add a play audio clip effect. 
and we can either use an audio config or we can use an audio clip. We will use an audio config because we already have that set up. Um, and then we will do this single shot audio. Um, so that will play when the assault rifle actually fires. When the assault rifle, if the assault rifle is out of ammo, for example, we want to play a different set of audio. And we will do that by going to this generic, uh, the generic uh, module and assign play audio clip. When the character reloads the uh, the audio, or when the character reloads the assault rifle, we want to play some audio as well. We can do that under the uh, the generic reload uh, module, which is right here. And then we can assign a new audio config to the animator audio state. So this will play state zero, which we didn't necessarily need because zero is the default, but we will then just assign the reload. Um, we could do the same for um, like equip, unequip. We could do that right here, assign an audio config. So there's a lot of different places you can assign audio to. So yeah, we'll, we'll just assign that right here. Um, so this is the equip audio and then we'll scroll down and we will assign the unequip. And, and so now, now we've assigned all the basic audio. I don't actually have audio enabled on for this recording, so you're not going to be able to hear it, but the audio is playing. So, so that's the, how to set up an assault rifle.